It's not often these days that I am influenced to purchase a makeup product, but I've seen a few reviews of this foundation just based off the reviews that I saw influencers doing. I was really intrigued and finally I saw Taylor Wynn use it. Just watching her put it on her skin made me stop the video that I was watching, go over to Sephora and pick it up. This is the Urban Decay Face Bond Waterproof Foundation. It says it has up to 24 hours of wear, contains 3% niacinamide, and is can't feel coverage. I'm intrigued about this for a couple of different reasons, which we'll talk about as I'm applying it. But in today's video, I'm gonna do a first impression and wear test of this new foundation from Urban Decay. Urban Decay is a brand that I have loved for a really long time, but I've never been a huge fan of their base products. So I'm excited to give this a try and see what I think about it today. I'll try to wear it for as long as possible. I'm gonna wear it through a workout. We're gonna put it through the real test. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. So on their website, it says you only need one drop to get a natural looking waterproof finish that lasts for up to 24 hours. It's clinically tested to improve skin texture after just four weeks. That'll be with the niacinamide. It's a vegan foundation and helps to minimize the appearance of imperfections, redness, acne scars, blemishes and pores. Formulated with sebum and sweat absorbing setting powders, Face Bond Foundation is non-comedogenic and offers buildable medium coverage in 40 shades from fair to deep. So it's a vegan formula, cruelty free, long wear, waterproof, sweat proof, smudge resistant, and transfer resistant. It's 57 Canadian dollars on Sephora. I got mine in the shade 14 light medium golden. It has 30 mil which is standard for foundations. And it says on here actually that the tip the distribution system is patent pending with no mess and no waste, which if it works properly would be amazing because I'm wondering if this might be a good foundation for my makeup kit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start to apply it. It says to shake it. I've already primed my skin in the regular way using my Essentry Mugwort Ampoule and my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. And I'm going to apply it using a damp beauty blender. It makes me feel like I wanna twist the cap off, but you don't, you just pull. And it says one drop, so let's do, oh, it's so cool. You can literally see it like coming down the tube in the applicator. Let's do one drop. Wow, you really can seriously control how much product you get out of here. It's really cool. I was able to just drop out that tiny little amount. It's really liquidy, super, super thin. Wow. I have really high hopes for this, you guys. So the shade is looking a little bit dark. I normally wouldn't pick a color for me that's called golden, but when I was looking at the swatches online, it just seemed like it was gonna be the best one. I'm feeling like, I don't know, there's no way like one drop can cover my whole face, right? Let's see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One drop is not gonna do it. So I will just squeeze, you know, a normal amount out onto the back of my hand here. I really like that applicator. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it like I normally do foundation. I do have some little breakouts on my chin here that I'm curious to see how well it covers. So if you've been watching my channel for any period of time, you'll know that my favorite foundation, the one that I've been using in my makeup kit for years, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation was discontinued a few years ago now. And I went on a huge search for a new foundation for my makeup kit and for myself, honestly, for special occasions. And I tried out so many different foundations and I ended up landing on the Lancome Tint E Doll Ultra Wear Foundation. This is beautiful and amazing. I have a full review of this foundation on my channel. If you want to go and watch it, I'll link it across the top and put a link in the description box down below. But I love this. However, there are two things about it that do not make it the perfect foundation for my makeup kit. One is the price. She's spendy. <laughs> And when you have to buy a bunch of foundations on a regular basis, that can add up really quickly. The second thing is this packaging. So I don't like to depop my foundations. I like to keep them in their original packaging. And this is glass and heavy and really large and in charge. 
these two foundations have the same amount of product in them and you can see how different they are in size. And because this is plastic packaging, it is so much more lightweight. So this would take up way less room in my makeup kit than this one and is way lighter and would be way easier to carry a bunch of these than it would a bunch of these. So although I have purchased a few of these for my kit now, when I saw the reviews of this foundation coming out, I thought, you know what, I'm going to give that a go because if it works, it can be perfect. So what I look for in a foundation for any type of special event, or maybe not even particularly for a special event, if I'm going to be wearing it for any length of time, even though I really like my skin to be glowy and healthy and fresh looking, I prefer to get that look through the way that I prep and prime my skin and then with highlighters or other glowy products that I put on top. I like for my foundation to be a nice matte layer in between so that I can control the amount of glow that I'm getting in my skin. If I have a glowy primer, a glowy foundation, and then I'm going over top with glowy products to finish everything off, it's too much. It's too much glow. My makeup is sliding off of my face. The more matte your foundation is, the more long wearing it's going to be. So with my freelance business, I do mostly event makeup. So whether people are getting married or going to a party or doing a really long photo shoot where they need their makeup to look really nicely under an HT camera for many hours throughout the day, I want the foundation to last. And so having more of a matte finish is going to benefit in that way. The thing that people don't typically like about matte foundations is that if you don't know how to build up the glow from underneath or you don't know how to add glow with highlighter or glowy blush, then the makeup can look really kind of dull and flat. Also, matte foundations typically tend to be thicker and heavier so you can feel and see them on the skin more than a dewy foundation. So what really intrigued me about this was how thin and lightweight people were saying that it looked and that they couldn't feel it on top of their skin once they had applied it. That's really important to me because a lot of the people who I'm applying makeup on, they don't want to look or feel like they're wearing makeup, they just want their features to be enhanced. So if a foundation is too heavy, heavy that can really set them off in a negative way. One thing that I loved about the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation was that it was medium to full coverage and you could build it up to a full full coverage and I like that this foundation described itself to be the same way. So we're gonna give that a go. Here is how it is looking with one layer. I did end up using more product than I thought that I was going to have to just based on the way that they describe it on the box. The color is actually not that bad. I really thought it was going to be super like golden yellow on my skin, but I feel like in the viewfinder it actually looks pretty good. So that's interesting. I would say on first impression, it is definitely a medium coverage. The blemishes that I have on my skin down here, they're still looking quite red and not fully covered at all like a full coverage foundation would do. My skin is looking more even. It's definitely matte, but you can see a glow still coming through from the moisturizer underneath. So even though the foundation is matte, we're still looking glowy, we're still looking healthy, which I love. Sometimes products can look a little bit dry between my eyebrows and on my chin. So far, this one is not. It's not looking super cakey or super makeup-y in those areas. So yeah, so far so good. I would hope for a little bit more coverage to be honest. So I think what I'm gonna do is now try to build it up and see if we can get more of a full coverage look as opposed to this medium coverage that I have here. And I'm wondering how, look how much more I felt like I needed to use. I'm wondering how a brush will do opposed to this sponge. So let me actually try buffing with a brush instead. Okay, so as I went in with that second layer, I was definitely able to build up the coverage. I have a little sunspot on my face that was really poking through and it's mostly concealed now. Yeah, I'd say it's definitely buildable. So let's go ahead and just build up that coverage everywhere else. I don't know if I love the brush. I think the formula is too thin. 
I typically only like to use a brush with more of a cream formula, so I'm gonna skip out on that and switch back to my sponge. Yeah, the coverage built up a little bit on my breakouts, but they're still really red. So another thing that really attracted me to this foundation was the claim that you don't need to set it with powder because the less product that I can use on someone, the better. Because as I said, it all comes down to people feeling comfortable in the makeup that they're wearing. So if I'm putting on a layer of foundation and then adding a layer of powder, just the more layers that I add, the more makeup -y their makeup is going to look. So if I cannot have to use powder, that would be really cool. And to not be able to use powder and have it last for 24 hours would be pretty amazing. Okay, so you can absolutely build up the coverage to more of a full coverage look, but it does, of course, because we've added more makeup, look a little bit more makeup-y on the skin. But wow, look at it on camera. It looks great, doesn't it? I don't know about the color. Maybe I'm just not used to it, but I think it's too warm. Anyways, that's not important. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of my makeup, and I'll come back to show it to you with everything on all at once. It's 11 a.m. as I'm finishing this part of the makeup, so we're gonna start the timer now, and yeah, see how it wears. Okay, hi, so I normally come back for my second check-in once all of my makeup is on. And I don't quite have all of my makeup on, but I'm about to go in with a cream blush because I want to see how creams blend over top of this foundation since technically it's a foundation and a setting powder mixed in one. Lots of times creams won't go on nicely over top of powder, so I'm really curious how they apply. To be fair, I did already go in with a cream bronzer, the Danessa Myricks Beauty Contour, and it blended out really nicely. Actually, over top, I didn't feel like I really lost any coverage in that blending at all. It doesn't look patchy, it just went in really nicely but I thought I would do a little bit on camera just to show you guys so this is the Merit cream blush in the color Stockholm I'm obsessed with this I've been wearing it pretty much every day and I'm just gonna use it for my blush today and yeah I just wanted to see how it went on because I know a lot of people are using cream products these days so it could be relevant to you guys yeah, there's no issues whatsoever. I actually feel like the creams are blending over top of this foundation better than they do over top of some of my other foundations. So they've got that part down. Lots of times the cream can kind of pick up the foundation underneath and start moving it around. That's not happening with this at all where I'm not experiencing any loss of coverage. Okay, so I threw on a lip and the rest of my makeup is now on. It's 11.30, so the foundation's been on for about 30 minutes. I did end up using a little bit of powder. I used it to set the areas where I put concealer, so underneath my eyes, and then I did conceal the blemishes on my chin, and I set those with powder as well. And then I did also use some powder on my nose and in my smile lines because I just cannot not put powder there. But I didn't powder anywhere else on the rest of my face. I'm really curious to test out this no powder needed claim that the foundation is making, so we're gonna give that a go. And I haven't used any setting spray yet. I thought we could do that together. Before I put setting spray on, I did just want to make a note that I do feel like I can see the foundation on top of my skin a little bit. And that's just the way it's going to be with a matte foundation. If you want something matte, you want something more long wearing, it just is going to show up a little bit on the skin, especially at first when you first apply it before any of your natural oils start to come through, you can kind of see it there when you look up close at your skin. So how I think of that is when I hand my client the mirror at the end of their appointment, they hold the mirror really close up to their face and I can see them hyper analyzing the fact that they can see the foundation, even though if someone was standing just a normal distance away, like you guys are, you can't see the foundation on top of my skin at all. But it is something that I have to consider because, because when I'm doing makeup on clients, they are looking at it really super up close and that impacts their perception of the makeup. 
So it's just something for me to keep in mind. But what I wanted to do was just add some setting spray and I wanted to see if that impacted the finish at all, if that kind of got rid of that little bit of makeup -iness that I can see. I don't know if I'm being too hard on it with regards to that. It is foundation, you know, it exists. It's going to be there. If you don't want to see foundation on your skin, then you need to use a product more like a tinted moisturizer or skip foundation altogether and just use concealer to conceal any areas that you want to conceal. Like I feel like if you are putting on a foundation, you're going to see it a little bit. So I don't know if maybe I'm being a little bit hypercritical of that. I'm also a bit sensitive to it because I've had a few clients recently <laughs> comment on the fact that they can see the foundation on their skin and that they don't like that. So it might just be sticking in my brain for that reason. But so let's just give this spray a minute to dry down here. I did use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, by the way, this is my favorite. I have a couple of different videos comparing this to some of the other popular setting sprays on the market. So I will link those in the description box as well if you want to see those videos. Okay, so I would say the setting spray has mostly dried down and that it did definitely, definitely help. I'm realizing I didn't blend the foundation that I put on my neck. <laughs> Whoopsies. Yeah, so the setting spray definitely helps get rid of some of that makeup -iness that I was talking about. It really helped everything just kind of settle down into the skin a little bit more. And I feel like it looks beautiful on the camera. What do you guys think? It looks really nice, right? I'm really happy with how all my makeup went on over top of it. And yeah, I'm super curious to see how this wears throughout the day. I'm gonna show you what it looks like in natural lighting. Okay guys, here we are in some natural lighting. Here's how it is looking. It's pretty dark and cloudy today, which actually makes like the perfect lighting for being on camera. Um, let me give you a close up so that you can see how it's looking on my skin in the natural light. Here's my forehead. So things that I will pay attention to today are how it wears throughout the day. Does it break up? Does it look cakey? Does it start to look dry on my skin? I'm also gonna pay attention to creasing. I often get creasing in my smile lines, especially with more full coverage foundations. So I'm curious to see how this one will do with that because it's usually thicker foundations that crease in my smile lines. So this is a full coverage foundation that's really thin. So I'm curious how that will do. I'll see if the coverage fades. We're gonna see how it lasts through a workout, the whole thing. It's 11.40 now, it's been on for 40 minutes. So we'll do an update in a couple of hours and I'll let you know how things are going. So far, I'm unsure. I feel like it looks really good on camera but I just don't know how people are gonna feel about how it looks in person. So, we'll see. Okay, hi, it's 1.30. So the makeup's been on for about two and a half hours. I usually don't do a check-in this early, but I was just looking at my makeup in the bathroom mirror and I wanted to come on and just say really quickly that I feel like it's settling into my skin so nicely. I was feeling like when I first put it on that it wasn't as nice of a finish as the Lancome one that I love so much. The Lancome has this really beautiful, just skin-like flawless finish. And I was feeling like this one wasn't quite living up to that. But looking at it now, as it's had some time to wear and it's like warmed up with my skin a little bit, I'm really happy with the way that it's looking. So I'm super stoked on the finish. Two and a half hours in, everything is better than it was at the beginning and we have no signs of any creasing or breaking up or anything like that yet. So I just wanted to come on and do a quick update and just say that and I'll see you guys in another couple of hours for a regular, maybe four hour or so check-in. Okay, here we are at the four hour mark. I have decided that this is too dark for me right now, but I think that the undertone is right, so it'll be a good one for me in the summer in terms of the shade. But 
Let's do a quick little update. So we're looking very dewy. We're looking very glowy. My skin type is normal to oily. Definitely more on the oily side in the summer for sure. The blush that I used, the Merit Cream Blush, it has kind of a balmy texture. So a lot of the shine in this part of my face here is coming from the blush. But you can see it like even here and across my forehead. We're glowy. We're really glowy. Now, I didn't set my makeup because it said it didn't need to be set, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that, yeah, in the future when I'm using this again, I definitely will set at least through the T-zone. I'm gonna actually go ahead and do that now to bring down that shine a little bit. those areas where I don't want to be super shiny. Besides that, I feel like we're holding up really well. Nothing's breaking up. It has not settled into my fine lines literally at all. Sometimes one side is worse than the other. Like sometimes one side will crease and one side won't. We have zero creasing happening and yeah, I think it looks, I think it looks nice. It definitely still looks like makeup. I don't know. I don't know, I feel like maybe I'm being hard on it, but when I look up close, I can just, I can see it on my skin a little bit. But it's holding up really well. I feel like it's holding on to the products that I put on top really well, and everything is looking really nice. And I'm super happy with how we're looking for four hours in. So I am about to head to the gym. I'm gonna do a low intensity workout. So I'm not going to be super sweaty, but I am definitely going to sweat a little bit and I want to see how it holds up because lots of times I'm doing makeup for girls who are getting married in the summertime and they're outside in the sun taking photos and they're up all night dancing on the dance floor. So sweat is to be had and I want to see how it holds up under those type of conditions. So let's go work out and then we'll do a little check in after that. Hello, okay, it's five o'clock. I just got home from the gym. All my sweat and everything has dried down and I am seriously impressed with the way that this has held up on my face. I will say I've looked back on the clips from earlier and this color is way too dark for me. I know I've said that, but like I just need everyone to know that I do realize how dark this is on me. It'll be perfect in the summer. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, this has held up literally actually perfectly. You could not even tell that I've gone for a workout. It doesn't really even look that much more glowy or like shiny than before I left for the gym. It has not faded, it has not smudged, it has not broken up at all. It just still looks perfect. Like it still looks flawless. I'm really, really, impressed by that. The long wear slash waterproof claims are definitely true. Like this is very, very impressive to me. So it's officially been on now for six hours and lasted me through an entire one hour workout. So that's really great. In terms of longevity, I feel like I couldn't ask for more than that. But of course, you guys, we're gonna continue to wear it. So I'll check in with you if I feel like I have anything to say or at the end of the night when it's time to wash everything off. See you then. Hi, it's 8.40. So we're at almost the 10 hour mark, which is a very long time to be wearing my makeup. And I am genuinely so impressed by how this has worn throughout the day. To be at the 10 hour mark and have my makeup still be so intact is really fantastic. My eyeshadow is all broken up and getting all crispy and my foundation is just still, still in one piece. 
Definitely starting to get a little bit shiny again. Nothing that a little powder touch up wouldn't help with. There's zero creasing. Maybe a teeny bit on this side, but like honestly not even. Like 1% <laughs> creasing in my smile lines, which is like an area that I often will get major creasing. No creasing around my eyes. The coverage is still there. We're not breaking up anywhere. You guys, it looks great at this point in the day. I'm gonna keep it. I feel like it'll be really good to mix with some of my other foundations. I feel like it's gonna be a really good mixing foundation. And I do wanna test it out more to see if it is a good fit for my makeup kit. There are so many pros to having it in my kit. The packaging is amazing. It's so lightweight. I love this little dispenser for the product. You can get such a precise amount and there would be zero waste. It's so long wearing, which is great for the types of events that I'm doing makeup for. I just wonder if it's just a little bit too makeup-y for the type of makeup that I do and the type of clients that I have. So I do just want to experiment with it a little bit more before I can decide about that, but there are so many benefits to it. In terms of personal use, I'm definitely going to love using this in the summer when it's all hot and humid outside. If you have dry skin, I would probably avoid this. If you have medium to oily skin, I think that this will work well with your skin type. If you're looking for an everyday foundation, something that you can throw on that's really light, that looks like skin, this is not going to be the product for you. But if you need your makeup to last, like if you need your makeup to stay on, and look fresh and not really need much of a touch up as you go throughout 10 hours of your day or potentially more because I'm gonna wash this off now but we could keep going at this point. Yeah, if you have a hectic job where you just need your makeup to look good for a really long time or whatever the case may be, if you're getting married and you're doing your own makeup and you're looking for a foundation that's gonna be super long wearing, like guys, this is very impressive, very impressive. So yeah, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep testing it out. I hope that this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll leave some other foundation reviews linked in the description box if you guys wanna check out some other videos that are similar to this one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.